guys, welcome to Cult Film and Review, the podcast where we discuss the films you love, but no one else gets, and we see if they still hold up. Tonight, we are going to find out what happens when you give a shark a limitless pill, because we're talking about Deep Blue Sea. So let's start the show. A limitless pill? Yeah. <laughs> it's basically the same was, thing. It's like not a deep cut. It's just such a relevant. <laughs> like, hey guys, thanks for joining the cult. We really appreciate it. Do us a favor. Head over to cultfilmandreview.com. Check out all the stuff there. Pick up a t-shirt. Then head over to iTunes. Leave us a review. If you do, we will give you a shout out at the end of the show. Then head over to our YouTube page. Subscribe there. Like, comment. And on May 10th, join us at Phoenix Film Bar for Buffalo 66. I'm smelling another... I'm smelling another sellout. I'm smelling it. Are you sure that's what you're smelling? Yeah. <laughs> As always, I am joined by Kyle Smith. Hey, how's it going? Chris Wilmerick. Hey, what's up? And Michael Slustio. Hello, everybody. Tonight, we are talking about Deep Blue Sea. It was directed by Rennie Harlan. Came out in 1999. Had a budget of 82 million. 82 million. Was it nine, but 82 million. Had made 164 in the box office. Has a rating of R and currently sits at a 59% on Rotten Tomatoes. This was a fan pick. This was Nancy's pick. Kyle, why did Nancy pick this film? Uh, I'll tell you why Nancy picked this film. Nancy says, everyone knows this film, most specifically for a particular death scene, but it's not often thought of as a cult classic. Maybe it's because it was my first R-rated film in theaters when I was about 12 years old, and my aunt wanted to drop me and my cousin off to see it and then see something else, but she had to be a champ and sit with us through all of Deep Blue Sea. It's a campy romp, and it, but it's blah, 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 blah. it's a campy romp, but it's got a compelling writing and sympathetic enough characters that oh, oh, yeah, you get the sweet game. movie combination of the movie being goofy enough that you can get a laugh out while also being good enough that it's not boring or painful. And I'd argue that the quintessential death scene is undoubtedly a cult moment. L. Cool J's religious cook with a parrot is a cult film character, and the ridiculous plot of and weird one-liners is something you can riff on with friends all day. Even though it wasn't thought of as an instant cult classic upon its release 20 years ago, I believe it's still watched and laughed at enough to classify it as one of the quintessential cult classic shark attack films. Wow, Nancy. That was a good uh, I love it. description yeah. of I, her love do, for it. Yeah. I do want to discuss this, too. Also, I want to say this about Nancy. I, th- I feel like she played this smart. I think Why? she did. She I played fe- it. I feel like she listens to the show, and she knows, <laughs> if I'm going to get a movie picked, i got to play to the audience that, uh, you know, and one of these guys, because this is, it was my turn to pick a movie. I couldn't think of anything, so I went with a fan pick. Cool. And I feel like Nancy's like, you know who's going to pick this? The guy who picks all the creature features, Cody. So <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's going to fight is, for Deep when Blue this, Sea. When this got submitted and I saw it, I instantly just went like, did Cody submit this? Yeah, yeah. under a secret like, yeah, name. Yeah, a pseudo name. <laughs> and you're right, Nancy, I did. So well played. Well played. <laughs> I don't mm. think she knows who you are. <laughs> she <laughs> listens to the show constantly, all the time. She's like got Cody posters all over her. No, <laughs> like, Where's no, she even no. getting the photos to get these t- posters? No, she's like, you know what? He loves Congo. I love just Congo. Just he you loves- can find a whole bunch of them. He loves the Andacondas. I love the Andacondas. Let's the, 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 the right, Andacondas. Right. She's just got mixed tiles of Cody. Let's, all not, paint, <laughs> let's not paint Nancy as here? a Cody exclusive fan here. We don't know that. Oh, here sure. he comes. Oh, Chris yeah, Army. Forget. Chris <laughs> Army. Rise up, Chris <laughs> Army. Rise up, Chris <laughs> Army. All right. So uh, I guess I'll go first on this one as far as when I first saw this film. I can't remember the first time I saw it. I probably saw it. I may have saw this in theaters. I don't remember if I did or not. But this movie is somehow, I've probably seen this movie five or six times. Okay. Easily. From video stores, from just being on TV. Like, Mm -hmm. I've seen this movie everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I've seen it probably since 99, five or six times. You might be the most well-versed person in the room on Deep Blue Sea. I could be. Well, also, Evan loves shark movies. So this is one of the ones that we have in the rotation, mm. along with Jaws 1, 2, and 3. Wow. <laughs> so some familiarity <laughs> yeah. in this one he's from a big, those. He's a big fan of Jaws 2. Big fan of Jaws 2. I get two. it. Okay. All right. Kyle? Um, yeah, I think I saw this in theaters, actually, when it came out. I'm almost positive I did. Um, and after that, I, I, I'm pretty sure I've seen it probably the same amount of times as you have four or five times afterwards on, on DVD and, you yeah. know, and yeah, I, I don't know, but that was the question, right? I answered yeah, it. Cool. You did. <laughs> Let's I'm go done, to right? someone else. Can I leave now? He Can I leave now? <laughs> it's, a lot of you guys don't, you guys are being <laughs> interrogated by the cops. Yeah. I know. Like, look, I don't know where I was when I saw it. I just know I saw it. Okay. <laughs> and I know the, my rights. I can thing. leave. <laughs> Kyle's downplaying this a lot, but he told me off air that he stood in line 
stood in line. I believe the word I used was camped out. Yeah, he had a with, with his LL Cool J shirt on <laughs> in 1999. Yep. With his boombox, listening to LL Cool J music, waiting for this movie. Huge fan. Huge uh, I wish I could fan. tell you an LL Cool J song right now, because then I could yes and this joke. Phenomenon. <laughs> uh, Mama said knock Mama you said out. Mama said knock you out. Going back to Cali. Yeah. yeah. Dude, come Mike on. Mike was clearly the bigger fan. Yeah, Mike. <laughs> Guys, it's like a <laughs> you, number, you pointed that joke at the wrong guy. Uh, honestly, I probably can't think of another one. Yeah. Wait, what's the one where he was talking Doesn't about matter. the girl from? Okay, <laughs> Mike. W- Mike, I'm Doing skipping. It. I'm skipping Doing Chris it. for a specific reason. Uh, I'm. Uh, when, was, when did you see Deep I, Blue Sea? I absolutely 100 percent saw this in theaters. Yeah, totally remember going to see it. Yeah, um, just nothing. 1999, man. I feel like a lot of films kind of felt. I want to talk about it later. I don't want to talk yeah. about it now, but I kind of distinctly remember the marketing for this film. Okay. And I don't think that it's now being like, I was 19, I would have been 19 when I saw it. Now that I'm more well-versed in like cult films and stuff like that, there's there are parts that I feel like uh, it was, uh, this movie wasn't marketed the right, the way that I would have understood it now. Yeah. Does that make any sense? No, it, yeah, no, no, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Okay. I see what you're saying. It's coded, but I got it. Yeah. Chris, when was the first time that you saw Deep Blue Sea? I've never seen Deep Blue this Sea. This blows my fucking mind. <laughs> I know. I'm so surprised. I'm like, how, dude? It, like I said, again, always on TV. Like, yeah. I haven't I had television I feel like everybody saw it in, in 1999. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like everybody went to the theater. I missed that uh, trip. And that's fine because, like, I don't know. Like, I guess I just wasn't, like, all on board with, like, Shark action at the time, like I wasn't <laughs> like, <laughs> shark I was, action. You know, shark action. I, one of the genres I don't get down in is shark action. Shark action. I shark mean, action. I was genre. Not, I've never been the type to like just rush to see whatever's new. Like I have to really be like drawn to see to go to the movies to see something. Yeah. And so Deep Blue Sea, I just looked at it as like a Hollywood blockbuster film that was coming out, starring a bunch of. You know, people that were a listers probably at the time, and Samuel Jackson, the only one. Yep. That's true. You're right. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, Thomas Jane later became like, yeah. this was kind of like, I, a this, did, was did, movie. Yeah, this was his right, breakout movie. This was his breakout Really? Yes. I thought this was like peak Tom Jane. No. No, no. no, no. no. This was like his debut What's role. Peak I believe. Tom Jane. Punisher? Punisher. And then hung on Tom HBO. Jane? Yeah. <laughs> Didn't he do Bond? Was he a Bond? No, no he was oh, never a shit. Bond. I thought he no. was. Uh uh-uh. uh. No, that's peak. <laughs> you think Punisher's peak? Oh, yeah. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Name another Tom Jane. Don't get me wrong. I like it. Off the top of your head. Name off the top of your head. Name it's another Thomas Jane movie just, besides Deep well, Blue Sea. I, I said a series. Does that count? <laughs> and yeah, Hung would be. I said Hung. Yeah, Hung they, would be. Okay, it's a series. That. That name another movie though. I don't know. I, 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 you know, can't we, do it. Yeah, The Mist. <laughs> the Mist. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. Thank Fuck you. Yeah. Great cult, movie. Cult film. Great movie is cult film. We should do <laughs> Saving that us on that mic. Solid film. I, would, yeah. I haven't seen the black and white version of it yet. It's so. great. It's fantastic. Black and white. The effects look better because they they have age. Yeah. 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 It's weird that I, uh, this movie would come up. I'm currently working on a shark movie called Ouija Shark, and uh, and now I'm wa- now I have oh, to free watch- plug there. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Check, wait, wait, guys! Simultaneously Fuck seeing Chris Deep Army Lucy for the first time. <laughs> so. Chris Army, get ready! Ouija Shark is coming. Chris is working on Ouija Shark. That's right. So it's, it's exactly what you think it is. Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> hold on. No, wait. Does the marketing? Does the shark? That's the no. I can't see all that. Does pieces. the shark have a Ouija board like tattooed on his body, or does he? Ne- no, nope. control the, the Ouija board. The shark board. is summoned from a Ouija board. Oh shit! Okay, I, I had to imagine. I wish that, it would have gone a little ca- That was the initial plot because if you were going to say it's about a shark playing a Ouija board, I'm like, dude, they can't reach it with their fucking yeah, well, sitting around smoking cigars. No, they use their, <laughs> they, they, they <laughs> use their <laughs> nose. You know, they use their nose. Guys, nose is only good for one thing: knocking down steel doors, Kyle. <laughs> That's true. That is true. That not is not they can't true. get a running start. But how can they knock down these steel doors? We probably should get to the plot with plots. With Mike. Deep Blue Sea. If you think it's just about the Deep Blue Sea, you are wrong. This wrong. is solely about sharks, okay? <laughs> Stars uh, this woman. She's a doctor. She's trying to find the cure for Alzheimer's. Uh, so she's been working with the Chimera Group, I believe they called. Okay. The evil corporation. Evil corporation. Pharmaceutical company. Or not really yeah. so evil corporation. It's a, if it's a pharmaceutical company. Yeah. It's like a pharmaceutical Big company. Farm. And she's working on Big this pharma. thing. And she says <laughs> that the answer is is in uh is gonna be found in the genes of sharks. Sharks can't uh they regenerate their brain cells, so they never actually uh they don't have any degenerative properties for their brain. Yeah, they they get they get a lot of things wrong about sharks. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I didn't, I, I'm not taking this as uh, scientific fact, but yeah. in this movie, uh, they see that sharks don't their brains never degenerate, so they assume okay, the cure for Alzheimer's is clearly within sharks. Um, and they're doing this uh, 
they're not supposed to be doing genetic engineering, but they're kind of doing it on the side. Um, she goes to Samuel Jackson, who I guess is like the investor, essentially, yeah, right? Is. Yes. Um, and he's going to be giving him the big thing. So he brings him over there. It's a very Jurassic Park situation. They bring yeah. the guy over. Uh, and, um, of course, shit goes wrong. These sharks, they realize um, whatever they've been doing to these things have made them super smart. And now there are these three sharks that are basically actively hunting uh, like seven people in a water station, like a drilling station. Some I don't shit know. You've never it, was a, seen. it was a submarine refilling oh, okay. station. Yeah. Submarine refilling station. They're all like in this kind of facility, and these sharks are trying to get in and get in. They oh, do. they're in. They're get in, in there. They do. <laughs> uh, so in. that's yeah. There you go. They're in there. All right. That was great. That Thanks, was a guys. good. That was a good. Re- that was that was one of the best. I don't know. Well, I think, I don't know about he that. always does a solid job. That was a home run for Nancy. No, I don't always do a that solid job. That was a home run. <laughs> if you can get your Nancy. first sentence out without somebody being like, "What? No." There's a couple times I was I, I wanted to correct him, but yeah, we'll let yeah. it go. We'll, we'll let it go. Um, this time. um, we did not talk about Tom Jane. Um, no, I was he's gonna, a criminal. I was gonna, um, I was going to correct. <laughs> I want to. Uh, no, we have to correct why Sam Jackson's there. You said he's going to give them the thing. No, he's pulling all of their funding and shutting down their operation. And they, don't. And they demanded another a weekend to figure it out. So he's like, oh, okay. I'm going to go with just to make so sure. It's, it's the opposite. He's already given the funding. He might pull it. He's pulling it. He's no, shutting it down. Yeah. And they're bringing him in to show them the success that they're doing. Right. I, can, yes. If I could also interject. Yeah, um, do it. One oh, more. Here we go. The, sh- the shark's mission is not ne- necessarily to uh, don't get give the away p- the ending. <laughs> Don't okay. give away the ending. Yeah. I'm aware of that. <laughs> you wouldn't sell the film like that. Yeah, yeah, you would. Build me up, buddy. And by the way, here's the twist. Here's here's how the do twist. we get there, though? Here's Am the... I right? See it on January 1999. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a break, and we come back. We'll talk more about Deep Blue Sea. We're back talking about the deep blue sea. This was Nancy's pick. Uh, so let's start off with just uh, almost, uh, I guess, the legacy of this film. This has been argued in several magazines and publications as probably the second best shark movie. Wow. Coming out heavy hitting, huh? I mean, the second best shark movie yeah. ever made. That's not Jaws related, I guess, is what a lot of oh, people okay. say. Like, is so, number one Jaws and two Deep Blue Sea? In a retro, in, yes. in a 2016 <laughs> retrospective, Wired Magazine editor uh, said, consider Deep Blue Sea the greatest non Jaws shark movie of all time. Wow. What, what year was this? <laughs> in 2016, he said this. Wow, that's recent. No, this is, it th- th- can't because The Shallows. When says, the shallows uh, come says, out? That's and, on there. That and one's superior to the shallows. Yeah. Not he, no re- fucking he, way. he remarked that. He did well, say that. No a, way. A, I thought opinion. the shallows was a good film. This yeah. is an opinion, but I, I mean when you do think good. about yeah. shark movies. Where did uh, where did Soul Surfer land on that list? Yeah, where's the fuck <laughs> a Soul Surfer? <laughs> <laughs> when you do think what, does about he have a problem with faith based movies? What the fuck? <laughs> What happened with Soul Surfer? <laughs> <laughs> shark played a prominent role. At least with me, like when I think of shark movies, this is like number two for me. Okay. Like when I think of shark movies, like when, when I think of like when people ask me like what shark movies have you seen, I'm always gonna be like Jaws, of course, and Deep Blue Sea, and yeah. like I'm always gonna name Deep Blue. You know sea what's in the funny is like uh, 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 until this was suggested to us like a few weeks ago, like. When I thought of shark movies, this never popped in my head. Really? <laughs> yeah. I always think Jaws or Sharknado. Wait, wasn't there Jaws another is always one? number one. Wasn't there another one where sharks had like lasers on their heads or something? No, that was a joke in Austin Powers. That was yeah. <laughs> literally uh, a joke in Austin <laughs> Powers. <laughs> Austin Powers. Well, then and, uh, it was effective. They should have made a whole movie about it. You're right. You're that right. should have been what 3 was about with just the sharks <laughs> and lasers on their heads. See, that's how real it feels after watching Deep Blue Sea. You think that that could actually be a real movie. Well, no. I want to talk about what he just said about Sharknado because I, I would have said Sharknado right? really I would have been like okay like yeah, if, you, if you were to name a shark film I'd be like Jaws and I'd be like name another one I'd be like eh, probably Sharknado yeah yeah Ouija Shark like I said um, <laughs> top of the list <laughs> this is really like promoting stop, this all stop trying to push this yeah. like five ninety nine no one's buying everywhere. Ouija Shark <laughs> five ninety nine streaming iTunes, everywhere it's only for ninety nine cents on iTunes no, right now gentlemen. Great. You know, like I, I, I really it made me realize that I actually haven't seen a lot of shark movies. Like, and there probably aren't a ton, right? You know I think it what it is. I think it's Jaws came out, but I mean, I think there were a slew of creature feature like under the water things. But I think everybody was like, "Don't do a shark, though." Right, yeah, right. Because that was owned, right? When I, yeah, it also is pretty hard to do. I mean, Piranha. I <laughs> right? think Piranha came out before or after Jaws. Before had to be. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think the horror stories of Jaws, people were like, I'm not touching the shark in the water thing. Yeah, so like, then it was like <laughs> Lake Placid and all these other, I mean, there were yeah, other. Well, that was oh, in the 90s, films, man. Like yeah, definitely 90s. Was definitely, yeah. Well, and the one that I always think of, it's funny, every time I think of Deep Blue Sea, I always realize I'm thinking about Deep Rising. That's okay. the thing that I was trying yeah. to say earlier. But yeah. That's not about sharks. No, that's about <laughs> some weird monster creature thing on a gotcha. cruise ship. Plus, okay. I think nowadays, if you asked somebody, I think a decade older, or younger than us, I think like the Meg would definitely come in. I mean, that's oh, pretty yeah, prevalent. Yeah. Like, like it's a newer one. It's no, a newer yeah. one. Yeah. I think Sharknado would still be a top of like I think, I think like so current because I think that oh, one no that way. has risen to like the top of pop culture right now. There is such a genre as shark exploitation. That's a real oh absolutely. That's a real yeah. genre. So I'm just uh I don't know, and I think that there's levels of this movie and Sharknado that are would you okay very alike. Would you <laughs> would you say that this falls into the shark? Would you call it shark exploitation? Oh, like yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent, without question. Anything with a shark and it falls into that. <laughs> yeah. So again, Soul Surfer. We talked about Soul that Surfer, already. No one will give fucking credit to. <laughs> Man. So we were going to talk about Deep Blue Sea tonight, but no, sorry, Nancy. <laughs> segue into Soul Surfer. Right. <laughs> so this movie um, is basically Jurassic Park. Nah, I don't know. Uh, there's elements of Jurassic yeah, Park. Definitely I wouldn't was, say it's. Oh, what? I wouldn't. I, mean, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't say that. I mean, it might. It might have like certain pieces, but the like Jurassic Park is about like like promoting and showcasing these these creatures and these animals, and this is more about they're trying to solve a problem. This is okay, more so more in line with like the little, remake of Planet of the Apes. No, I agree with you. It's a little bit more of like Anaconda Two Blood Orchid, where they're trying to mm. get it for you know the the Blood um, Orchid for. I never saw the second one. A so. much more yeah. apt. Yeah, relation. Yeah. Yes, yeah. they're trying to get the blood orchid. So or like they Congo, can... they're trying to get a crystal, a diamond. Basically, so. they're trying to make a pill that makes you live forever with that one in that movie. They're, but they have to get this rare flower in, okay. in the jungle where the the snakes are. Is the flower called the blood orchid? It is. Okay, yes. cool. Putting these things together, puzzle. Yeah. The pieces Boom. are falling in. Here's a crazy thing because you brought up Jurassic Park. It costs sixty three million for that was the budget for Jurassic Park. This is eighty two million, yes. and it's yeah, I know it's like five years difference, but that's not that far. Do you want to know why this was? Why? 82 million because they did some badass things with this movie. I gotta give Renny some 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 credit here. On uh, no, like on the special effects side of things, as, as you know what I mean. So, you know, for its time, you gotta remember 1999 when we when we do talk about the CGI of this film. You gotta remember this is 1999. So for yeah. for its time of how it looks, you gotta remember that. Yeah, Again, Jurassic I, Park. I'll point you to that because that yeah. was 1990. What three? three? And yeah, it had that's CG. What I'm saying. No, I, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. I don't think that that is an excuse. And then. <laughs> What the uh, the other thing that they did is the the sharks that they built, um, the actual animatronic sharks for this. Those things were fucking badass. They were like, we're not gonna make the same mistakes as Jaws did. Those things were a remote control. They swam. They worked. Yeah. They no. They actually swam on their own. Yeah. Remote controlled. Like underwater they had like huge fucking engines in them mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. these things were incredible technology had come a long way for sure like oh, yeah. since jaws what did this make box office it, it, it doubled it doubled, it doubled? okay yeah, i was just did, curious yeah. it, but it, that was over right. the internet whole world yeah yeah, you know? yeah. so mild success didn't which, do that well actually in the u.s all right at yeah rennie like. rennie did not have a lot of hits like up until this point, I think this was like uh, this was. Oh, I thought he did one right before well, no, that like, was a hit. No, no, it was like cliffhanger. It was oh, like no. cliffhanger. like, but the cliffhanger was oh, like ninety two, ninety three. He, he did long kiss goodnight right before yeah. this one. It was like right. and he did die, die Hard too. But nothing was. Yeah, well, that's uh, around the same time. Like nothing was. Oh, Die Hard two was eighty eight. Like this yeah. is like this is nothing. He hadn't had a, like a, a successful box office hit for a while before this movie. Yeah. Okay. I think there was a gap for sure. I think he was still like a go to like blockbuster. I director. think this was like what they kind of relaunched him. I, if, if I what I read was correctly, like he'd had the gap, and then yeah. he got the opportunity to do this, and like. Well, let's also remember in. that, like the the you know the 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 idea of a blockbuster, I think, is something that is definitely becomes a thing in the '90s, right? Like you don't have For these sure. massive fucking movies, and summer blockbusters isn't until we start hitting like the Jurassic Parks of the world and stuff. Well, so this, um, this through the '80s all the well, way no, through the '90s. Yeah, no, that, I mean. Jaws is the first quintessential blockbuster, but, right? Uh, the, yeah. uh, like a summer blockbuster? That's yeah. what they say. Yeah. That's yeah. what they say yes. is that he invented it, that Spielberg invented it mm. with that movie. So I mm -hmm. can't imagine it took 10 what years before. What I think before. this was... They probably were planning them out more. Like, But I mean... Maybe it was... During, no, that's what I, that, that's what I mean. That, I, I mean, know. the idea of like targeting that. Yeah. Targeting that summer block of releasing your biggest films and 
purposely making these big films to uh-huh. try to capture that. Well, there was there was this trend, if you remember, like ninety nine, early two thousands, of big budget horror movies that were like summer blockbusters. Okay, that's true. Yeah, no, you're right. Did Scream like reinvent that? Because <laughs> you what around this time you had like know. what the 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 uh, the, the haunting. haunting came out. Yeah, you, a- uh, what was the other one remake? Oh, House on Haunted Hill. House on Haunted Hill. Yeah. yeah, where they all had these like big budget, big actors. The Hammer except- stories, yeah. right? That, this one didn't yeah. have. This one didn't have the big actors because he was his idea. In which, you, if you kind of look at it now, knowing this, it's kind of like, ah, oh, I see it in there. He was very inspired by Alien. I could see it with this movie. I could and, see and it. Put it in this movie where he wanted like a more realistic cast where it wasn't like big name, you know, a ton of big name actors. Honestly, even the look of the facility they're at has a very, very alien, alien look. Feel I mean, that makes a lot even of sense. Even the sharks hunting them down has the feel, yeah, you know. Yeah. Just considering, I mean, if you think about it, like I remember Alien. Alien was like supposed to be. What, what came first, Jaws or Alien? Jaws. Jaws. Jaws came first, and Alien, like, wasn't there a whole in space, no one can hear your yep. scream? Wasn't that like a direct? Yes. Kind of like, we're, we were specifically saying, like, yeah, Shark is scary, but like, this is even fucking scarier. Yeah. So I, I, I can't, I mean, if you look at it like that, and Rennie Harlan's just like, I'm going to take like the two most quintessential, <laughs> like, scary films that aren't like, you know, ghosts and shit, yeah. and mash them together. Mm-hmm. Like, you kind of do get this film. With a little, with a little bit of. I mean, this wasn't tongue written, and cheek. This uh, wasn't comedy, written by Rennie Harlan. This no, was it written wasn't. by somebody else. Like who I, I read encountered a real life shark attack and somebody died, and that's and he had these nightmares, like these recurring nightmares after that experience. And it, in in his dream, the writer's dream, it was like these sharks could read his mind and we're going to kill him and he had to go down this like long corridor or something in it. And, and so he just Damn. he kept having this nightmare and he wrote. What became Deep Lucy after multiple rewrites? Wow, but, they, yeah. he pulled a lot out of this, and it still didn't make it any less. And ridiculous. in Chris's dream, they had lasers on <laughs> had their lasers. heads. Yeah, they could read your mind and had lasers. My dream was, <laughs> Mike Myers was playing like the main guy. And he was like British. It was really weird. It wasn't Tom Jane. <laughs> Pretty sure. <laughs> Pretty sure you that just was, actually watched. That was Deep Blue Sea, right? You watched Austin Powers instead of Deep Blue Sea. I, I did. Yes. I did. <laughs> Again. Um, so. Uh, yeah, th- so now let me get into some of my quarrels with this movie that I find is really funny. Quarrels? Qualms? Qualms. Sorry. Okay, or quarrels. Quarrels. He's had, he's had legit him? arguments with the fight movie. Him. He's screaming at it. Quarrels. This is not a creature feature. <laughs> not technically. The movie's like, take that, bitch. <laughs> no, there's just like, it's just, there's there's so many funny things about this movie and just like, I'm just like, how do these sharks are fucking huge? How do they fit in these tiny spaces? Dude, right? They they like, they like they got know. smaller as they got into the facility. They were as small as they needed to be. Yeah, for the scene. Now, wait, but there's three sharks, right? There's yes. there's two Gen 1s and a Gen 2. One Gen 2 is okay, what they right. keep referring to. And the Gen 2 was bigger yep. than the yeah, Gen 1. So right. are we... I always took it as... It, yeah, but the Gen, the smaller the ones gen, the gen 2 ones. was in the facility, though. Yeah, it he was. He does get All in there, but I'm questioning, does he get in the kitchen now? Is that the one that attacks <laughs> yeah. him in the kitchen? The Gen 1s attacks in the kitchen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. yep, yes. The two so, Gen 1s go first. Yeah, let's say this Kay. first, to set up the whole movie, basically uh, the, the, the this doctor is... Goes to goes flown into this meeting where she's told, "Hey, you know, we're 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 shutting down this program." And she gives this rah rah speech yep. to get mm-hmm. like one more weekend. And Sam Jackson's like, "I'm going with you because it's my money, mm-hmm. and yeah. we're and, gonna and do this." Backstory about Sam Jackson: uh, There's this weird, ridiculous backstory right? about how he had gotten his millions because he was a survivor of like these. There were like nine people and they got stuck in an avalanche yep. and he was one of a few that got out. What if, right. Yeah. If there was five. There were five out. left. Right. Yeah. And they don't really address exactly <laughs> how, how that math works out until later. Yes. <laughs> but, um, it is a weird added ridiculous thing, thing that, that yes. almost seems like it's almost played for a later moment in this film. Which it is. Which it is. Yeah. And, he's wearing a, and he's wearing a wig the whole time, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I didn't really pay I don't know that he attention is. Is that, that his real hair in... Uh, see, are we assuming Sam Jackson can't grow hair? I don't know that he's... <laughs> <laughs> we don't Deep know that. talks on cold film. I don't, know, I don't know what his hairline looks like. I mean, he's in. Uh, what <laughs> You're is googling that? Sam Jackson's real hair. <laughs> <laughs> in I'm 
glass and stuff. I mean, when I'm, he plays gla- that's definitely Mr. Glass, a wig, man. is that a wig? That's, that's a wig. Yeah, that's sure. definitely a wig. What do you mean it's a in glass? Well, I like the figured he grew out his hair, and they were just like, "Watch what we're gonna do." They do it plenty of times with other actors. Why uh, dude, not Sam yeah, Jackson? Yeah, this is this looks like Sam Jackson's hair with the gray on the sides. Yeah, and think of think like, of Sam Jackson. Think that's what it, Sam, just Jackson's Sam Jackson's hair looks like. In Die Hard with a Vengeance. That's his hair. I don't think Sam Jackson wearing no fucking wig, dude. Yeah, I don't think he's wearing a wig in this. You don't think so? No, I think he's wearing a wig. No. I know normally he's wearing a Kangol hat, but like right that in. doesn't necessarily mean he doesn't have hair. Tell us what you think about the <laughs> Sam Jackson's hair in Deep Blue Sea. Wig? No wig? Also, the, with the opening of this film, <laughs> if we talk about aesthetic-wise, too, you instantly know you're in a film from anywhere from 1999 to 2005. I would even go further back. I, I, I was watching, I was like, this is like 96 to, yeah, about 2005. It definitely has that, yeah, there are things in this film that just... Just don't age well. Um, some well, of the jokes, uh, the way the writing is, is a little the writing, like, yeah, for but sure. The, and and this is what I want to talk about. Like, and maybe the, we'll probably keep coming up to this is whether or not. So, like, Sharknado is very, very self aware. Yeah, it knows that the, the the dialogue's bad. It knows that the animatronics are bad. It's a it mock. knows that the story's absurd. It's a mock. Do you think this film? Was doing the same thing, like, and it just was under wasn't no. understood, or do you think this no. is just a product of the no. '90s? Definitely this is a not product of the '90s. Definitely dude. not in the same camp as yeah. Sharknado. Sharknado yeah. is mocking this and uh, this shark exploitation or this this wave of shark movies and Shark Week and all this shit. This trend that you know, like it's I said, clearly, wave. By the way, well, it waves up every time Shark Week comes around. You'll <laughs> like you start seeing shark shit everywhere. But like, yeah. but I'm just saying that like. Deep Blue Sea was trying to make an a legit action movie yes, with sharks. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, but okay. it, in the same way that I think like Placid was but trying to make so a legit like, there's like so monster many, movie. There's so many like egregious plot holes in this movie though too. Yeah, like, but it's also a summer action, action movie, movie, dude. dude like, like there's gonna be plot holes. Okay. There's plot For holes me, it was in Congo. More the, more the dialogue that I thought. Yeah, it had well, to be a little bit more right. self aware like, than it was saying. Yeah. My favorite thing about it is, is like this film opens up with a shark attack because one of these sharks gets loose, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And Later on in the movie, we find out that this doctor has genetically altered these sharks. Samuel Jackson and everybody in <laughs> that works at this facility with these with these two doctors that do this that genetically change it are fucking shocked. Mm-hmm. Like they didn't know. Yeah, and it's, I'm like, how do you not know? They're bigger than normal sharks. Well, those They've two doctors had their own office. They literally dude. broken out and attack people on purpose like they only eat other sharks this is mentioned in the movie but yeah you're a shark expert uh, thomas jane who does not question any and of also, this what i don't understand is okay here the here's the team right we got the two kind of like scandinavian one played by stellan skarsgård and uh, I, i'm not sure who the other actress was I i've never actually i don't think i've ever seen her in it no else, she did look very she looked familiar she to was me. really good though I want to say that I thought she was very good in that. And then you have Thomas Jane, and then you have the main doctor, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And then you have the tech guy, who is uh, uh, John Turturro. D- no, no, Michael Rappaport. Michael, Michael Rappaport. Rappaport. I'm sorry, yeah. John Turturro. John Michael Rappaport. Rappaport. <laughs> I didn't of- realize how confusing those two actors were <laughs> until just now. Like, oh yeah, you could make that mistake. Anyways, Michael Rappaport, right? That's a team, right? Like, who's injecting the... Who, who was doing all this genetic testing? The main girl. Who's so, that? Yeah, By no, herself? No, it was Susan... It was uh, Susan McAllister, so that's the, the main doctor. And the, um, the other doctor, the one that Janice... Um, Oh, Dr. Jim Whitlock. Those two did it behind everybody else's back. Was that J- was that Stellan Skarsgård? Yes. 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 Dr. Yes. Whitlock. So he knew about it the whole time? Yes. Yeah. I was under the impression that he did not know. No, no he, he, knows, he, he, def- def- he definitely yeah. knows because they make like they have they have like a shared glance. There was a and moment stuff okay. when they're doing I the thought that extraction. His, his because he's the one also that questions, hey, we found it off the coast, like we got to fucking yeah. calm but these somehow, things. I was just assuming that because he saw, he was the first one to notice, like these sharks are not acting right. Yeah, But how, how I'm like, how does the other team of these experts not fucking know this is not sh- normal it's like shark it's such a- shit? I, I don't. I, I'm not. I'm. I'm not blown away by that because, like, I feel. I feel like. I feel like. Makes, I feel like the two doctors had their own shit they were going on. The other people had very specialized tasks to support their research, but mm-hmm. they were the ones that but were it, making all of these decisions. It just, just makes trust that their story. Team. It just makes that story between her and Thomas Jane, like Carter, so fucking stupid. Where he's just like, "Are you? Yeah, but I, I may be a criminal, but I didn't lie. I guess we're the same, you and I, as criminals. Like, it's like." How do you not fucking know, idiot? You know what, though? <laughs> like, I'm actually going to start giving this movie a pass on this now, based on what Kyle just said. If this happened in a 1950s sci-fi film, I wouldn't think anything of it. Hmm. In that, it would have been like one doctor with a syringe sneaking in yeah. and like stabbing yeah. the yeah, shark yeah, exactly. and then running out, and we'd all be just like, well, it looks like that doctor fucking went rogue. Yeah. Like, 
Oh, she definitely is like you. She's definitely. It's fun. I'm glad they kill her in this movie. Okay, thank you for bringing that up because I was like the whole time I was like they're gonna let this fucking bitch live. Like I <laughs> like. And I will say, I've never said no way so many times in a film than this film. Like, I said that probably 30 times. No way. And then eventually I had to correct myself and be like, this is an action movie. I can't go into it with that kind of attitude. Yeah. But going back to the point about her, I thought for fucking sure they were going to let her live. And it was pissing me Dude, off through the whole movie. My favorite thing is like, I'm like, of course, of course they had to work her in her underwear oh, into this fucking movie too. Right? That scene, on top of the and electrical that, and box. I really wanted to bring that up too when we got to it because that's another film, that's another part where I thought, come on guys, you, you were self-aware about this. Didn't we just experience this in another movie and I called it out? It was the same thing. The very end, they put her in oh, a you, situation. You said that in Ghosts of Mars, but yeah. that's what it is. Yes. Yeah, yep. but this one's same way thing. more deliberate. This like, one's like super really, obvious. Like, like, not, like they have yeah. the, sp- the guy with the spritzer between takes was really like Going soaking, town, soaking yeah. her down. Oiling it up. <laughs> and I just think it's like, it's like baby oil. To- <laughs> and I hate that it's done under the guise of like, you know, science. She yeah. would have been electrocuted otherwise. Because what she does is she takes off her wetsuit and I guess what they're trying to say is that it's she like stands rubber. on it yeah. so it's it insulated. Can, insulates her it's from smart. the electric. It's not not smart. It is. Like, it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but come on, it's Chris. A smart, it's a smart, it's a smart watching, way to try to get a quick, like, semi new scene in. Exactly. And that's how I felt about Ghost of Mars. I Again, understand the feeling. <laughs> you know, it's summer blockbuster. You gotta, yeah, have, you gotta tick all the boxes. This, you do. This, you do. PG 13. No, this is R. R? Yo, he- hard R, dude. Are you kidding me? I, I don't know, man. Yeah. I thought for a second it might have been. Arm bit off. Man, blood everywhere. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right, so go on. Yeah, but no, like, and also with the death of the sharks too. If you, I, I guess, apparently all the the shark deaths are from Jaws one, two, two and three. three. Yep. It is electrocuted, it's blown up, and like a visceral. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. so makes that's sense. Well, and also he did that little. St- well, I don't want to call it a snub, but it was maybe a wink to Spielberg where he's like, I made my shark 26 Six. feet, not 25, yeah. like Jaws, you know? Yeah. So he was clearly like, he knew he had big shoes to fill, and he was trying to be funny about it, and like, like maybe he knows he's never going to overcome the popularity of Jaws, but... Again, you know, calling now, that stuff going out. back to it, like, is it self aware a little bit? It is because some of it has. No, to even be. this dude, yeah. like, there, there's a there, the, the the license plate thing. That's a throwback to yep. Jaws. That's, that's the exact totally, li- yeah. this is the exact license plate. He, I think yeah. he had to be a little self aware because he knew what territory he was stepping and I th- into. And, and, yeah. and to go back to it, I do think now that I think about it, if you're saying about throwbacks, thing, maybe that underwear scene is a throwback to Alien. Could be. Yeah, actually, yeah. It looks, would make be. a lot of sense. Yeah. Definitely could be. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Well, right. This one was done in a much more lurid and like <laughs> <Yeah>. weird <laughs> male gazy way than that, other, Here's than one that thing, film was. Maybe we could say that about Rennie Harlan. He's great at cherry picking from things that he loves about all these movies and making his own movie out of it. It's funny because I, I, Rennie Harlan's like I love Rennie Harlan just as a guy who can keep getting work, like mm-hmm. who keeps working because he can. Yeah, he's like it's like man, we need someone to direct this blockbuster. Who can we trust? Dude, he's he's, ba- he's bankable. He's bankable, it, it, and you know what? Good on him for making that his kind of career. You well, know, doesn't mean he, he's he's hit bangers every time. No, no, but he's like he's you know he's he's like the equivalent of like the old school like the the directors that are like contract. He's an, like contracted to a studio. That's yeah. like you just go to him with the job. Like here's a script, knock it out. Well, this like, is the okay. funny thing because like a little bit of cult film and review history. History before we ever even came up with this, one of the ways that me and Cody connected was that I was doing my now defunct FriendlyNeighborhoodFilmmaking.com. <laughs> still up, guys. It's still, it's still it's on the up. internet. It's still on the Anyways, internet. Anyways. Um, <laughs> bring it back. One of the first things I did is I wanted to interview somebody, and Cody had just came, came out with a short film, so I interviewed him. And who did he say, who did you say your favorite director was at the time? Rennie Harlan. Rennie Harlan. And we had a hour-long conversation about Rennie Harlan, and that was kind of like one of the weird precursors to the podcast thing was just this idea of like, man, we talked about an hour about Rennie Harlan. Like, yeah, because I do. I do, do that all the time. I have an admiration for him and how he's just able to. They're like, we need someone to do uh, uh, a summer blockbuster, Rennie Harlan. We need someone to do yeah. a horror movie, Rennie Harlan. We need someone to do a drama, Rennie Harlan. Like they, he is like the you're right. He's like the contract. Like, are we going to get a home run with this? Maybe. We might make our money back. And yeah. I, I want to also say that I think you, if I remember th- how you described it one time, you said, like, what about Rennie Harlan? And I think you said something along the lines of, like, he's the guy that you call 
like when you want to do a, a decent job with a very popular franchise. Exactly. But he will always be the worst of that group. And yes, you remember oh, you saying yeah. like like Die Hard too, with the worst Die Hard. Take this for instance. Now this is of course before for the, the newer, newer ones came yeah, out. But he yeah. was just like, Yeah, Die Hard too. Yeah. Like with a vengeance is better. <laughs> <laughs> he also directed the Fat Boys music video Are You Ready for Freddy? So we know he's good with franchises. Well he did yeah. Fred, Freddy Four. Did he? He did yeah, indeed. He did Freddy Four. Yeah. Dude, this, this guy is not just our, gets better and better. This is not better. our first foray into the Harlan. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, you did say that Library. before on one of the other shows. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's right. Dream, but he's Dream one of, Master. He's one of those guys that you can go to for any fucking genre, and like you, you can, you can. On a bankable, you're going to get a bankable film. He knows how to yeah. make a movie. Yeah. Like, he knows how to make a, a movie that will entertain people for the most part. Yes. Right. <laughs> like, it won't, it won't be. You're like not going to win he's, an he's, a, he's a textbook movie, yeah. movie director. It won't be like, absolutely director. terrible, but even if it's bad, it'll be kind of good. Probably yeah. make its budget back. <laughs> Probably make its budget yeah. back. That's, right. Yeah. You know, we got to release something. We need to fill the coffers of the summer hits. So also, let's throw Rennie also, a movie. Married to Gina Davis. Not a lot of people know cool. that. Oh, do yeah. they meet on Long Kiss Goodnight? They did indeed. That's when they met? Yeah. I believe so. I used to love that movie cool. when I was a kid. I loved the shit out of Long Kiss Goodnight. I would watch working? that all the time. No. <laughs> She's still working. She's still working. Uh, yeah, she I, guys, is. She has. Yeah, uh, she did a sh- TV show recently. I, I why are we talking about that? She's a fucking like, Olympic archer. She I represents know her, like, United I States. I know that. Like, she is that? Yeah. She Good is. for her. Wow. She's Didn't like know a that. fucking professional Fantastic. archer. I have right. no idea. Fucking Gina Davis. Gina when you're Davis. An actor, like when they that? finally get to like the actual aquatic center, like yes. you know that whatever that is. I didn't know that that kind of thing actually existed. I was like, what is this fucking place? Like, I don't know if it actually does. does no, it? did you Google it? No, I didn't. No, it but you said like it a... like you said it like oh, it's a submarine refueling no, station. No, no, like, that's, that's probably what they said in the movie. It was an old World War II submarine refueling station. They bought it and then they expanded on it. That's what they did. Okay, so but 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 already the location. The location. It's badass. It gave me anxiety immediately. As soon as they flew out there, I was like, oh shit, sharks, water world, this is what we should have got. <laughs> I thought of, the location right? was fucking badass, although I couldn't right help, water world. I couldn't help so but much. like just picture Sea Lab 2021 the whole time. I, uh, <laughs> can I say? Same thing. Yeah. I look at it, I'm like, wow, this is just like Sea Lab. It is a cool, <laughs> the setting is cool. When they were like, when like the thing is, is it's like the top level is barely above water. That's what terrifies me about And like it. the yeah. rest of it's way down and you have to go down elevators and shit to get right. to other shit. I'm like, right. that's way too deep in the ocean. I do not want to be hanging what out about, down there. What about that cocky motherfucker Carter right when when the big wig shows up, what's he do? Uh, we'll go swim the shark that we just got. Yeah, <laughs> that's what to show all my shark that part, techniques. Can I say, did that part confuse anyone? Because the movie opens Keep with him played out. with him catching a shark, he catches and one then of the it Gen cuts to, to him out. lowering a shark into a tank. Correct, mm-hmm. right? But that's not the shark that he caught. We didn't see him catch this other shark. Oh. That is true because yeah. that's no. That I took that as that's the shark that the other two sharks eat. Can I tell you something? Yes, there's a black mark. The, the the tiger yeah. shark that has the license plate in its mouth that he 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 wrangles and plays with to get the the license plate out in the beginning of the film. That's the food for the other gotcha. sharks. Right, and that's what confused that's me. I thought shark. that was the shark that's that black he, market shark. Because the shark that attacks the boat at the beginning is a Gen One. Nothing and is I'll, on the up and up and at can this I say facility. Also, didn't realize it. Nice, another nice little fucking Easter egg slight to fucking Jaws. What's that? My, oh, the, my understanding the is license that plate? the license plate shark, which is supposed to represent the Jaws shark, gets eaten by two. Like, this is the new generation of shark. Yeah. Well, the li- Danger. Oh, no, that was a tiger yeah. shark. That yeah. was the, and that's yeah. what the, the, the license plate. Uh, yeah, no, 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 but what I'm Jaws. saying, in Jaws, there's a license plate, right? Yeah, it comes out of a tiger shark. shark. That same shark that had a license plate is the one that gets eaten, right? Yes, the tiger shirt. It's it sounds like a little slightly like maybe it's like I'm eating a wink, jugs. wink. It's a yeah, it's a nod. It's a wink, wink nod to like we're our sharks are better than your sharks. Yeah. Yeah. Also, uh, we do another of my favorite fucking things that these early 2090s, uh, 99 movies did in the horror movies too, where it's like, how do we explain like there's probably. 100 people that work on this facility. Oh, they, all, <laughs> you know? they all leave for the like, weekend. Yeah, <laughs> everybody. It's, oh, that oh, comes up in like all the yeah, 90s Jurassic movies. Jurassic Park does the same yeah. thing. Everyone fucking leaves for the weekend. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> oh, time to go home for the weekend. Oh, we just have a skeleton crew. Yeah. Um, it's oh, spring break. Are you fucking kidding me? Wonder what's yeah. going to happen. Never, nothing could go wrong. <laughs> it's Nothing Labor Day wrong. weekend. You think people don't want a three day weekend? <laughs> you know what's funny is thinking about that now that there's this massive crew of people that work there. Your point about how did nobody else know that the, they were genetically modifying them gets even more ridiculous. Right? It does. It's a really ridiculous <laughs> thing. But again, if there was a 1950s fucking sci-fi, I would have been like, yeah, that's about right. This, <laughs> Thomas Jane, the shark expert with a fucking rap sheet. That's a weird, yeah, such a right. fucking weird story that, arc, too. I just too. seemed like a real shoe-in, shoe-in, like, like 
thing that they had to put in. I had to convince myself to be convinced by that. My I was favorite like, thing is like okay. my favorite thing is, is How like you get this job? they're like good luck getting a job somewhere else. I'm like. Sounds pretty credible at this point. He's got like, a real specific skill set. Yeah, I yeah. don't feel like it's that much. Like, yeah, but you know, I, like how do you get this fucking job? I, th- I think there's another thing too. I exactly. think this, this goes to them trying to explain what we just ex- what we're just talking about. Like, how did no one know about this, right? Like, yeah. and how would not at least the expert? I guess you saw my file. I think <laughs> it probably came as smart, like maybe an intern. <laughs> and he showed up and he goes, "Hey guys, uh, I read the script and stuff. Like, just one thing I don't understand, like." How come, like, the shark expert doesn't, like, call everybody out and then realize that it's genetically engineered shark and just, like, fucking end this whole thing? And then all the writers are like, fuck, what do we do, I think man? he kind of yeah. does know. Maybe maybe he was a convict and so he, now he can't, can't say anything. Well, yeah. Yeah. He definitely, there we go. He definitely, Let's just put that in there. He definitely <laughs> puts the pieces together when he sees, sees them hunting in packs. Yes. And then he's like, okay... Yeah, why are you, they doing... You, you fucked with these but goddamn they animals. This is definitely a band-aid for a plot hole, because it if is. he wasn't a criminal, he could literally just go to Sam Jackson and just pull the pull this funding now. Yeah. This yeah. is bullshit. Yeah. yeah. It's a real... You know what? I feel like I feel like the like the night before, the, the writer was writing the script, they're like, you know what movie I fucking love? <laughs> what? <laughs> Maximum fucking overdrive. That Emilio Estevez, you know? <laughs> he's tied down to that job because he's a convict and he has to do what he says, so he's stuck at the gas station and sharks are like swimming around it. Mm-hmm. Swimming around the gas station. Yeah, just yeah. like the gas station. You're right, you're yeah. right. And then he uh, then he couldn't get Emilio. Yeah, I then he couldn't get Thomas Emilio. Jane. Come on. So he's for Thomas Jane. Maximum overdrive is I, definitely a Rennie Harley. I gotta Rennie say Harley right now, favorite. I really want to see Thomas Jane's character like show up in like an Ocean's Eleven movie. <laughs> His shark expert character? Yeah, oh, with that hair it, and makes the, the, it makes the perfect introduction to a movie. Like, we need somebody who's, like, criminally <laughs> inclined, <laughs> but also has a specific set of skills that, like, no one else can have. Like, the like the like like they have to get a key out of a shark tank that's inside of right, a casino. Right, right. we call? <laughs> so they throw <laughs> Thomas call Jane the guy in. that survived the shark attack <laughs> in deep him blue sea. Him and I'll show up because they're a team. We only work together. Yeah. We've been through a lot. <laughs> Seriously, did, like I, I like get, him. I got to I got to give that to the ending also of this film jumping all over the place, but again, like I'm sorry. Not that you are people to call live. ocean. <laughs> <laughs> I had to throw that in there. <laughs> I have bad memories of the ocean. <laughs> it's a great What a what a what says a, his name's Danny Ocean. He like goes I can't work with you. <laughs> flashback. Ah! Nancy says it in her I believe she says he's a quintessential cult film character LL Cool J in this movie Nancy said that I believe she said mm-hmm. that in, we in haven't her... talked about him Nancy at all. did say that and I, yeah, I would no, like I was, to I he's, get into that he's right hilarious now. like this character this character Preacher. is just so he's preach I don't know it just feels so strange and out of place he's like he does he's like blending all these different character traits yeah. together and, and I didn't realize like how religious he was until like the end. later yeah is that right? he's stabbing the shark in the eye <laughs> I didn't realize how religious he was until he was stabbing the shark in the eye with a cross. <laughs> Using it as a knife. Yeah. No, but at the beginning of the film, you... you Screaming it, Jesus. Does he say something about... <laughs> does he give a Bible quote or something like that? Not Dude, he gets to draw out the whole no, film. Yeah, and they be, they're subtle with it at first. Like, you just see the big cross that he's wearing. Okay, and then he starts right, to inter- interject right. those, start, yeah, like, Bible verses. He starts so. praying when they're yeah. when the water's filling the... No, no, which, I, I understand that part. I'm just saying, like, right when he was introduced, is just the cook, no shark, danger, anything. Yeah. Normally in a movie, they'll show, like... That's 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 preach. Why do you call him preach? Uh, oh man, preach loves the Bible, man. Like it yeah. will say something about it. Yeah. But I felt like this. I didn't learn it until he was finally being he attacked a real by the raunchy, shark. He had a real raunchy parrot working in the kitchen with him. So don't eat there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that it was good of them not to totally point that out. Like have to say like, yeah, he's real religious. Like like to preface the audience that this is the character you're getting. I like that they kind of snuck it in a little bit. It did get a little heavy handed at the end. Like, yeah, a little bit. It got a little yeah. heavy handed at the end, but I was reading that they wanted it, like L. Cool J's character was like, they wanted him like as a warm kind of yeah. humorous character. I don't know necessarily why Faith came into it, but maybe because it's just he plays that off well and it feels, it felt convincing. Like I felt like, okay, like he could be, I feel like he could be Come this Come on, character. he's everybody's favorite character in the movie. How can no, he not be? I disagree. What? Who's your favorite character? Samuel? Mm. Who? Who's better than I Nate? liked Michael Rappaport. I like Michael Rappaport's character. I like, you know, like, I know it's not a major character, but, like, I did enjoy him on screen. I liked yeah. him actually a lot, too, yeah. in this movie. Yeah. I have a question for you guys, too. I, and yeah. I, I, I remember thinking this when I saw this film, and then, of course, when I saw Halloween uh, H2O. Not H2O. Uh, which is the one he's 2018? in? 2018. Oh. Uh, H2O. Who's in? That who's in? L. Cool J. L. Cool J. H2O. Oh, H2O. H2O. Yeah. H2O. Okay, I just want to make sure. Um, I think, that, like, was there something Whoa. in his contract where he was saying, like, here's the deal, all right? I'll be in your film, okay? 
But at the end, it has to be shown that I totally did not die. Mm. Like, I feel like he got a lot of those things. Because in H2O, right. he gets a bullet in the head, and you're like, he's dead. And then he just shows up like he's fine, right? Sure. And in this one, you think maybe he could have died in the explosion, but he shows back up. And then he gets literally almost torn in half. They wanted Sam Jackson. And he still survives. They wanted Sam Jackson to play L. Cool J's role, but his... his uh, Agents were like, no, we don't want him to play a chef. So then they got L. Cool what, J to play that role. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. What year did H two O come out? What's it was twenty? It was twenty 99? years later. So ninety nine. I just it's it's like one of those things where 96? I notice like you'll always see Cameron Diaz right? ninety eight dance in her underwear at some point in time, and one has to wonder at some point in time where you like contractually obligated to dance in your underwear. <laughs> Can I ask like, you guys a question and see if you guys see a conspiracy here because I see it. Okay. Zoe Deschanel always has to sing at least one song in her movie. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I'm sorry. LL Cool J, right? Yeah. yeah. Halloween H two O. Correct. Water. 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 Right? Water. Right. So what if that character, after he, you know, lives through that movie, decides, hey, you know what? I'm gonna go work. I'm, I'm gonna go be a cook. I'm gonna stop being security. I'm gonna go do what I love to do, Same and I'm guy. gonna go cook. Yeah. That'd be funny. And he's not all about God now because he lived through yeah, this if you go tragedy. Back, if you go back and watch his show, he's got cookbooks all over yeah. his desk. He he lives through this tragedy, so he you know, and he wants to get away from people. Again, you know, Michael Myers can't swim. Mm-hmm. He's just like Jason, can't mm-hmm. figure it out. That's yeah. every serial serial killer's Which, weakness. Of course, and and of course, this leads into Ocean's Fourteen, <laughs> right. where Thomas Jane's character gets invited. <laughs> and he says, "I know a guy who can help out." He's yeah. unkillable. <laughs> and <laughs> Cool J shows up. Whoa. He's like, I thought a, I thought a, like a psycho killer. A and a shark. Took a bullet and from a the psycho killer. He's, showing the sh- he's doing the scene in Jaws where he's showing his scars. Like, <laughs> that's weird. I had almost my leg bit off by a genetically modified shark. I took a bullet right to the head. <laughs> All right. So I also, we got to get into the other really iconic scene in this movie. Probably the most iconic scene in this movie. Yeah. Which is. Yeah. The most known. It's the best. It's the best scene in this movie. Hands yes. down. So they're they're realizing that they are trapped in this facility and there may be n- no way out. Yep. And they got they're gonna swim. Got by God, they're gonna swim to the top. And Samuel Jackson is now giving this fucking rah rah speech of like mm-hmm. what happened in the Alps when like they survived this avalanche and like how did they fucking killed people. I like how, yeah. it, how, how it opens to it's like you think water's fast, you should see ice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like all right. Yeah, dude, that's much faster. Yeah, it's I mean, so I don't weird. know if they're saying they like basically they were saying they turned on each other because yes. of the yes, pressure. That's, yeah. they, that's ate, exa- they, they ate, ate each they other. Is what he's saying. Yeah, is what they said. They, they had they people resorted to, to doing the worst thing you can think of. And it's such a weird thing. I don't know that I was getting. I mean, I get the avalanche cannibal cannibalism thing, but I think it was more like we lost our ship because we were fighting and arguing, yes. and we killed. Ended up killing. Yeah, that, people that is the speech he's trying to make. He's yeah. trying to say we're not yeah. going to fight anymore because if we continue to fight, we're just going to start eating each other. Which I think he's just taking a little too far. Mm. They're just on the third floor <laughs> of this aquatic <laughs> yeah. facility. And he's giving this like, "I'm going to lead us to the fucking promised land. We're yeah. going to make it out of here." And what happens? I could- it's yeah. great CG. What, exactly shark. what you think is going to happen because if any any like uh they foreshadow seasoned it. movie yeah. watcher will feel the shot that they're setting up for this. Yeah. Like, You're almost like cheering for it though. You are. I, I, I was I, questioning like is this like the first of the Sam Jackson speeches? Uh, no. No, that's no. got to be he that's did, still cuz doesn't he, does he get, no, he doesn't I mean, give a speech. He was doing in. shit like like a uh, fucking yeah, the right but, thing. Yeah, but yeah, but like in the That's in these true. kind of ridiculous films, the, you know, uh, he always gets like, movies. yeah, he always gets like a big speech in these. Campy I don't know. I guess movies. we'll find out Could when the be. next when the next person suggests snakes on a plane. If anyone suggests snakes on a plane, I guess Pulp we'll find out. Came way before the. This. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, oh, maybe, I guess that's true. Huh? Maybe yeah. that could Shit. be the case. The, the thing about it is that I remember when I first saw this in the theaters, I was like super shocked that this happened, and it actually kind of hurt my feelings because I liked his character so much. I was shocked too in the theaters and, when it happened. And yeah. now after watching it. It's it's so clear they're foreshadowing that he's going to get eaten by a shark yeah. because uh, they even Tom, Tom James, James James like, don't stand close I to the water. Yeah, n- nobody ever says that unless you absolutely are going to get eaten by a fucking shark. Right. <laughs> so well, it's like I can't believe I didn't see it the well, first dude, time. Dude, the thing is that that's also crazy is like the level in- of intelligence that they give these sharks is like that's, fucking crazy. That's what I'm saying. That's why it gets Sharknado for me because at some point in time I'm like, okay, now it's getting kind of unreal. Yeah. Like, they're, like <laughs> I understand point. it's like in Jurassic Park, like they're opening doors and stuff, but I kind of buy that a little bit. Yeah, like this not, one, it seems like they're like, I mean, they're even plotting. If, even they, when you realize plot. what the ending is, yes, and you're like, 
wow, they like chess pieces ahead of these people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and absolutely. they learn this in such a short amount of time. Yeah, yeah. Like, for example, when Stellan Scar's guard goes down, which by the way, that whole sequence, like seeing it for the first time, Dude. I, I was, I had anxiety and it was intense. Like, how I, cool, I felt, yeah, how cool is that animatronic shark just in that little, th- like in that little pool thing where the water's just running by, mm-hmm. and they bring that whole contraption and fucking shoot it in the brain. Dude, and tension, pull out the there's thing. a lot of tension there because you know the shark's not. You know it's gonna bite you, someone. You know, you know someone's it's not bit. asleep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's not fucking asleep. And, and yeah. And then it, when it bites somebody, it goes all out on the gore, like blood all over the fucking place. Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm like, this guy's dead. Nope. He's not dead. They put him on a stretcher, take him outside in the worst fucking hurricane that you could ever be yeah. in, in the middle of the ocean with waves just crashing all over the place. Strap him to this fucking, this stretcher. helicopter yeah. in the middle of this like hurricane. I'm like, Oh my God, the shark's going to jump out and eat him. But no, the fucking shit gets jammed. He <laughs> falls into the tank. He gets snatched up, and he's still not dead. No, because <laughs> he's got I, the that, oxygen that's thing what on I him. I love about like this is when you know how super fucking intelligent these sharks are because they even try to show them like even more intelligent later on, like when they attack in packs, like Thomas Jane and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But like. <laughs> They, this shark literally like is like, oh yeah, here's your fucking friend back. Yeah. <laughs> right. Which is even worse for me because it's like, it's, at one point in time I'm thinking like, okay, maybe it's just the shark realizing like, if I can launch this no metal thing into this glass, it'll break. But then I'm realizing, wait, no, no they sh- can knock that glass whenever they Dude, want. They can yeah. just bang in that glass and yeah. try it. In which case, now it's not a, ma- a matter of them necessarily even just being smart, but malicious. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, it was watch plotting. the soul of your friend. <laughs> no, it was <laughs> body. <laughs> it was fucking plotting. I kill you all. <laughs> I know it's so I'm great. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> it really is. No, it's like an emotional so level trying to affect you. It is. No, but when it even pulls this the is helicopter the one you, into this the shit to mate, blow everything up. Human. <laughs> yes, it pulls the helicopter in purpose, on, on purpose. purpose, into the fucking tower. Yeah, exactly. It's like multi. It's like a multi-layered fuck you. And they would have had to have figured this out ahead of time. They did. They they had to have thought. Wait a second. None of this makes any fucking <laughs> they sense. Did. They know. And they you're know, saying on that the okay, weekend. I'm just gonna have bite, a smaller crew on the weekend. I'm just gonna bite this. his arm off because I know that these humans are gonna call a. I believe what they call a helicopter <laughs> to come and pick him yes. up. I will use Hold that on. helicopter creature and I will slam it into the yeah. thing, which will shut down the security system. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's so absurd at this point where you're like, wait That's a why second. I was no, saying, no, they way. Do, no they No, they do understand this because you got to realize, like, people like Samuel L. Jackson have been dropped off by plane or a helicopter at this facility before. Mm-hmm. So they know that, yes, like we can get, so they know this. These sharks, yes, it's like the scene in Jurassic Park where they're like, they're like the raptors are just the testing for like the weak spots. But a hunting spot. natural thing. This is not about like, no, this these, is a totally that's how different. how smart, their brains are five Hold times on. bigger. Hold on. They've been around for thousands of years. How could they have known about you Millions. can be as smart as you want to be, but unless you have access to information, Dude, you can't learn it. How would they know what a they, helicopter listen, was? They, I don't know, but they know the difference between <laughs> titanium and steel fencing. That's yeah, what I'm talking about. That's insane they knowledge. Do. Yeah, it's like insane a, knowledge. It's a limitless pill. I get that a pill. dinosaur could be like, wait a second, I saw these humans, they opened it up with a handle, I'm smarter than these humans think, I figured that out. Yeah. But they took the information Dude. in. This thing is like, you know what? In 1776, <laughs> as I've been told, America f- discovered their independence from yeah. fucking King George. I will use this information. It's a Google shark. It's yes. totally a Google Dude, shark. My favorite, it's one of my favorite lines, too, because it was like, that's the dumbest shit I've ever heard is when she's like trying to explain, like, we've genetically altered them. And as one of the side effects, they are now smarter. 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 <laughs> like, like, oh, uh, the, the side effect of <laughs> making their brain five times larger would be that they got smarter? Apparently. <laughs> like, They're producing was, more of that yeah. fucking fluid, man. You know, I mean, I guess. I mean, that's <laughs> the excuse they use. Yeah. No, it's just so fucking the, funny uh, to me. Again, like, I also love the convenience of the helicopter explosion just setting off an insane chain reaction. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that, yeah. that eventually sent a fireball to the only no, plane and the, blew that shit I, up. We like, get to the end of the film, and I got to give it away now because I want to talk about it. You know what? We'll take a break for Chris so we don't fuck our shit up. We'll be right <laughs> back. And we're back. We're talking about Deep Blue Sea, 1999. This is Nancy's pick. <laughs> So high energy on the end. (laughs) (laughs) And let's get back more into the absurdness that is this fantastic movie. I feel like I don't know. You were about to roll on something. 
And you're about to be like, oh, I got to. What, what were you saying? You were like, I got to bring up the ending. Oh, yeah. I got to bring up the ending. Yeah. Because it's. And we got to talk about this. Yeah, no, these sharks are so smart that they methodically brought this place down level by level by drawing these people into different directions yeah. and, and, and hurting them basically mm-hmm. so Trapping that they could them. bring this down so they could get over the steel th- or through the steel fence. They yeah. wanted to sink the, what is, what were we calling it? But here, but, but the, sub base, the, the, arco- the, 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 the aquatic, aquatic lab, lab. but they would have, the to, have, lab. But they would have a, to have an understanding no, but, of metallurgy. <laughs> no, but here's, yeah, here, here's the issue. Like the fence is like, they could just, they have enough power to blast through a steel door. They could just swim and then free willy that shit into the fence and take it down. I, no, I there's mean, barbed wire on top of there. They ain't trying to get cut. Oh my god! <laughs> I don't know. It's such a weird cut. thing. It's such a weird thing that these people. The, 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 just the end game is so insane. elaborate. Yeah, it's, it's so elaborate. elaborate. If this is, is Thanos's fucking, <laughs> right <laughs> end game plan, fucking the Avengers are done. <laughs> I was just trying to get through that steel fence, but you you can eradicate everybody. <laughs> I just yeah, I did think it. Was, I, did, I did think it was like really fucking hilarious that they had to put in there Thomas Shane being like, "Those fences are just regular steel. That's not titanium." It's like, who fucking who cares? Well, don't like, they, don't are they you allude? implying that the sharks know the so difference? They're absolute, Kyle. <laughs> they're, yes, they're, so, they're absolutely so implying also, that the sharks know the fucking difference between titanium I know, and steel. I'm just saying it's so and ridiculous. What they can smash through. Also, I want to put I want to put this out there. Michael Rapaport says he fucking locked the gate up. So. How, I also thought. Well, they've already jumped the. Yeah, fucking they've already fence. jumped the fence, but they, they added just, two feet to it. Why don't they just want to? Ju- why don't they just jump the fence again? They, they, add, they, they added add, two feet. They do say that again. Yeah. Feet. They would also, just smash how, if they landed also, on this fence. They would just smash through it. Maybe I'll, they're not as strong in how, the air as they are in the water. I like how quickly <laughs> Michael right. Rappaport added another two feet to that fence <laughs> yeah. line. By the way, <laughs> yeah, by himself apparently yeah. <laughs> with yeah, a yeah, skeleton no crew. And not only that, but like this, that no one could just obviously see that the fucking fence is larger. They literally wait. If somebody raised my fucking outside fence, I'd know it. Yeah. Like, there's an extra brick on my fucking fence. <laughs> they weigh eight tons. If they ran into the fence, they would knock it down. It's like, I'm like, there's, there's, I have to believe they're smart enough to, to bring down this whole fucking thing. They know, like, okay, we got to go take level one down first, then level two. Yep. Then we got to hurt them to level three. But they can't be like, you know what? Yeah, if that- I just rolled into this, this steel fence. <laughs> <laughs> they're so smart, they're ineffectual. <laughs> if I just rolled into the steel fence, I'd be on the other side. No problem, because my weight. But I, I, also thing, like, I, mean- I also like the math of that. They have eight feet of fence to clear, but they have to take down two stories worth of yeah. labs for that like- eight feet to drop low enough to the water. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> In the explanation of the doctor, it's just like, so we made their brains five times larger, which made them s- smarter. But I figured if I made them overly critical yeah. <laughs> of <laughs> details the, and too granular in thought, get, that they would never get around so to they they get, they'll, get, they'll get stuck in the process. Yeah. Here's the problem. And they would just give up at some point in they time. Watched, here's, the, here's the problem. They watched a Bond movie while we were making them smarter. Yeah, just kept um, and now <laughs> they are really into Bond villains. So they have these overly complicated plans. <laughs> To do a really simple task. <laughs> That's so funny. To showcase their, showcase their smartness. Yeah. To show um, how Chris, smart you had your hand up? Yeah, well, I was just like wanting to get to the end, like when when finally <laughs> I just end this fucking when episode. Tom, no, but we were getting we we're talking about the ending of this movie, and it's like, yeah, the, the shark could have done this, but what instead happens is it's trying to get out of the cave. It's trying to like rip through the steel. Yes. And all the while Thomas Jane is like going after it, like swimming in like the actual cage with the gun, right? That he's right. gonna shoot, he's gonna shoot the shark it's got an oh, he's expo- not in there yet well he's got an it's got an explosive attached to it yeah and what's her fuck it decides she's gonna sacrifice herself or attempt Correct. to by yeah. cutting her hands and jumping in which that was a shitload of blood well, <laughs> her because her whole thing was well we can save millions and they're like what about saving everybody here yeah yeah but we can save them. and then That's she finally the clicked with her at the end and weird i'll sacrifice myself yeah. all the while you think preacher is now like he got attacked i thought he was dead i was like they're gonna fucking kill him really yeah. and they're gonna let this asshole live over here <laughs> like i'm glad they did it i'm Which, glad by the way, he i would survived. also note that investment over by the way on that ending because she already had by this time lost the cure yeah, in the electrical thing. Yeah. So this is a no loss. It would have been better if it was just like it's either the cure or save the people here. Right. Like that would have been a dilemma. But they took that other that formula out. <laughs> well, no. Now she had. Now she has to justify her being a shitty person and breaking you know rules of science. So yeah. and causing everyone to die basically. That's so true. She still she still was sacrificing something. She does sacrifice something, but I am yeah. saying it's like it is a little less. 
Like it's she had less to live down. for. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, I, that when she gets fucking bit by a thing, like I had to rewind it because I looked away. I was like, "Oh shit!" Because I forgot that I thought the three. Of th- I knew for a fact L Cool J lived I knew, and yeah. Thomas Jane, but yeah. I th- I couldn't remember if she made it. Mm-hmm. So I had to rewind mm-hmm. it because I looked away when she yeah. died. That was a great kill. Oh, chomped up all pieces everywhere. Mm-hmm. Everybody gets killed like that. They That's, do. Yeah, it looks. It looks. There's some yeah. fucking <laughs> cheesy ass CG, the CG in some of those moments. That's well. my favorite thing I watched. I so I rented this from the Superstar Video. Mm here nice. in phoenix uh and i watched the special features on this and that's like one of the things he's ballsy enough to say in the special features he's like i dare anyone to point out the difference between the animatronic sharks Ooh. and the cgi sharks in this movie and i'm like are you fucking kidding me bro? well in the 90s man it looked it looked it l- no even in the it, 90s no in the 90s it looked okay that's the thing like our our opinion has been shifted so much it, it, i agree with kyle i remember when final fantasy uh that uh what was advent the, children no 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 what was the other one that came before that oh the one that had nothing to do with the actual game yeah no that yeah. was advent children no no no, no, no that, that was with cloud and that was a seven yes oh this was oh, like the the, the fantasy the within dream, or something yeah like? uh dreams within or some something shit. like yeah, that yeah, yeah. Well, people will know what we're talking about yeah i remember yeah. the trailer though the eye opening and it was I like i remember oh! people like Every article was like, our actor's going to be completely like, yes, it's replaced. so real. It's And now I go back and watch that film. I'm like, these guys don't even look real. <laughs> this <laughs> yeah. is, this yeah. is shit. Now well, you watch, shit, like, I just watched, I just watched um, with, uh, with Sammy, we just, we just watched like the first three episodes of Star Wars. Yeah. Episode one. It's like, oh my God. Like, I thought this looked good, but this looks fucking awful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. all the CG is terrible. All just looks like Play-Doh or plastic yeah. and shit. Yeah, it's all it's waxy like, I looking. Just re- I just re- recently watched Aquaman, and they, like, you know, de-age his parents, which is, you know... It's weird looking. It's waxy, and it's it's just... I don't know. No, no, no. I mean, some of the shots that really stood out no. to me was, like, the, the fucking... Uh, the above shot when the two sharks sink sink up and hit the cage. Yeah. I was like, God damn, that looks really bad. Yeah. Like, Anytime a shark eats someone, it looks yeah, really bad. Yeah, the, the worst blood, one, the, the worst apart. one is when Sam Jackson dies. Yeah, that one looks that's yeah. so bad. They shouldn't have showed his body for that long. It does look ridiculous. He's like all like well, that's, and it's so fast, it's like <laughs> but, but that was like uh, that was Renny's whole thing. He's like, We're gonna show you the shark. Like we're gonna show you the kills, we're gonna show you the shark. That's what I want. I appreciate in this movie. that. It does look dated. It just doesn't though. age well. Yeah. It doesn't age well. I, I mean, look, at the time I I don't remember ever walking out but, of that film and thinking. No, at the, time, at the time you don't. You don't. But think also, oh, man, that was shitty. Yeah, like, just, I remember just being like, okay. But also, <laughs> as I think Nancy was kind of saying, like twenty years later, now lo- looking back at this film, you kind of have to. You kind of have to look at it with different eyes. Well, the crazy thing about it too, and, and, and I hate to go back to you, and I'm gonna go back agree to with you. this too because um, going back and thinking about it, uh, my girlfriend had said when I mentioned we were doing this film, she was like, "When that's pretty recent, right?" And I said. No, it's like, you know, 2005 is what I said. Yeah. And then went back and I was like, oh, 1999. And then watching the film, realizing that like, yeah, I'm going to say that this stuff has not aged well, but it's still on par with like Sharknado, which is almost like deliberately using bad CGI. Right. Right. Like it it makes me wonder kind of like, where is technology? Like how much does all this shit cost? That's what's funny. It's like bad CG now has caught up to 1999 good CG. Correct. Correct. You know, that's 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 true. That's how it is. So in like another ten years, bad CG will be like you know on par with we'll you know Endgame. Yeah, yeah. And then good CG. Who who knows? Then that well that by that time the robots have taken over and we don't live. That's you true. Know, we're yeah. Gone. Yeah, yeah, we have robot existence. overlords. <laughs> Jesus. Our robot Christ. overlords will determine whether or not they want us as actors. Yeah, or even want us to be entertained by film. I want to go Very back. Very strange. To it would the, probably be for their entertainment. That scene again. <laughs> what scene again? That end scene that we still haven't capped off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Have we not? I'm Thomas sorry. Jane is a apparently attached to the shark because he gets shot by the arrow. Yeah. yeah. And then that fucking thing blows up like C4. No, he, he gets, he gets uh, when they when they hit the fence line, it rips a small opening, yes. it yanks him out. Out. Off, so off so if shark. you see when he gets out, I guess I was looking at when you see when he gets out, he has like a this Huge giant hole. hole in his thigh where this thing clearly like ripped out of. I know. I remember I watched this with Desiree and she commented, that's all. <laughs> like when she saw it, I was like, yeah, it seemed like an intense situation for a scrape on the leg. Like, I, you know, it seemed like. Yeah. So I don't know. Like, I guess I just it didn't catch that he got. I was like, how did he survive that? No fucking way. Yeah. He yeah got, he's he behind got, the fence. Dude. He, he got he's, stuck on the yeah. fence line. But like, I feel like that fence would have blown back and made him into like Swiss cheese from I the mean, size look, of that look, explosion. Look, I, I've, I've seen uh, uh, Transformers 
where Shia LaBeouf jumps off a fucking plane going like mm. a thousand, like Mach 2 yeah. and survives. So I've seen every yeah. Fast and the Furious film. Guess what? No Vin Diesel. That's true. I you can't to... just jump off a car and land into another car without being smashed to pieces at 85 miles an hour. Vin Diesel can do whatever he wants in yeah. the car. He's yeah. that good. Just I've, saying. I've seen it's him true. jump just building. To this at this a... point, I can disbelieve this for this film. Oh, and that's exactly what I was going to say yeah. is at this point, like this was a movie in a long time I feel like I haven't had to like really suspend my my belief in some, you know, like to, to like be like, Oh, like none of this could actually happen or it doesn't seem like it could, but it's just a, like a fun way of looking yeah. at things. I feel like I haven't seen a movie like this in a while that, yeah. that did this where it is like literally like a popcorn movie. It is. Yeah, this is. That's it, by, there's no doubt that yeah. this is definitely what that is. Right. And I think we've already said Rennie Harlan is the, king. is the best of the bunch when it comes to that. Mm-hmm. Is the king. What do you say we rate this Mammer Jammer? Yeah, let's do it. Fucking do it. Did okay. Nancy give us something to rate it? Yeah, she wants us to rate it Side Effects, The Sharks Got Smata. Does somebody say that? The Sharks Got Smata. Yeah, I brought that no, up. She's, yeah, the, the doctor. Dude, that's so funny. Yeah, side does. Effects, the, sh- the Sharks Got the, Smata. The, yeah, this is the side effect of their brain getting bigger is that the, they got, sm- which is so fucking, it's like, duh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Nancy, uh, do you want, we want to know what she rated yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. She rated it 8 out of 10, but on a five point scale, what is that? Like a 3.5? F- 3.5 out of 5? Or 4? I'd, I'd say 4, four out of 5. 4, four out of 5. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Five. That'd okay. be a 4. Yeah. Cool. So Nancy gives it a 4 out of 5. It's pretty high, Nancy. Yeah, <laughs> that is high. high. If our math is right, I'm gonna go. I'll, I'll go. I'm gonna go with a. Th- I'm gonna go with a three point five. This is just a fun, stupid movie. It really is, and it's it. It reminds me of, of uh, you know, like this is like right around like high school, start of high school for me time. So it's very. I look back at this movie fondly as one of those movies where I was just like, yeah, this bit is. Keep his blue my head is like a shark fit. Oh my god! Which also gets an extra extra point on this one because it <laughs> is that has the a point five, or is that the, a whole point? It's a whole point because wow. you know it has its own theme song. It's got yeah. to. That's true. But the thing that that's great about this movie is it hasn't aged well, which m- works in its favor now. I think it's fun to like laugh at this movie um, mm-hmm. even more now, just because it is campy. Um, it is fun. The lines are ridiculous. Like, I don't know. I just had a good time with this one. So 3.5 for me, I wouldn't say it's the, I don't know. I don't, I don't know where I drink it in shark films, but I don't, I don't think it's number two, but I like movies like this. It reminds me of like eight legged freaks, you know, snakes yeah, on a plane. Like there was so. like, there was like a time when movies like this were coming out. So mm-hmm. had fun with it. Let's mm-hmm. go Kyle. Yeah, I'm going to come in at a three as well. I'm going to agree with Nancy. She's, she described it as it's a campy romp, and that is it through and through. I will disagree. She uh, Nancy did say it's got compelling writing and sympathetic enough characters. I wouldn't say that. I'm going to call the writing compelling, but I feel like the writing is what helps it get a better score because you're right. It hasn't aged well, and it and it and it's twisted the film from being something when I was a kid, being like, you know, just you know uh, blown away by all the crazy effects and crazy stuff that's happening now into being something that's just laughable and you could just joke around with it and i had a great time having a conversation about this movie because it's just so much ridiculousness and how deep you can go on like backstories and stuff on why the sharks would even formulate a plan that involved a helicopter you know what i mean so um yeah for that i'm giving it a three point uh no a three out of five there we go three out of five from kyle let's go to mike um, I am going to give it a three out of five as well. I think this is a really weirdly fun movie, actually. Uh, um, it doesn't age well, but, um, it has enough camp in it and, uh, uh, weird special effects that I feel like it, it, it it's grown that. And we haven't asked this question and I, I kind of would like to after we're done with the reviews, whether we think this is a cult film or not okay. at this point in time. But, um, one thing I will disagree with Kyle on, I will agree with, uh, are f- the t- Tracy, Nancy. Nancy, Nancy. I'm sorry. Okay, I will agree with Nancy. Um, I do actually think that like the characters are are like emotionally compelling a little bit. I just don't think it was done well. Mm. Like I feel like if this was any other action film from the 1990s, it would be like there would be a colonel there and he was weaponizing the sharks. <laughs> that yeah, was the right? real reason exactly. why it was there. In this one, it, the, the 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 person that does set off the, all the bad shit actually does have a pretty 
legitly justified reason for doing so. And it comes from a good place. It's not a bad thing. She doesn't want to kill anybody. She just wants to cure Alzheimer's. Can I say something is, about that, though? Because that? this is the that's the one thing that I actually uh, I had a problem with in this film is that she kept bringing this up. Oh, but I, she never gave a backstory. Like, and that's didn't. what it is. I, I kept thinking, like, okay, well, this she seriously did. affected did. somebody in her life. She did. Who? She says she gets the story about how she he killed some, like her dad. Yeah, she does say some thing yeah. about. Oh, she did. Yeah, she yeah. Does how she has to, how she had like to tell that. her dad over and over again to watch him be crushed by oh, telling him. Oh yeah. That, All right. That, I I, I remove I remove my statement. Dead. I remove my statement. We tell you edit it out. She is. Did he write it? Her origin story. Her yeah, I did. Her her origin story is basically how every Spider Man villain is made. Like uh, where it's like I want to get. I'm not evil. I'm trying to cure. Right, and, like, now, and now I'm shock lady. Yeah. Like, it's like, like a Mr. Freeze kind of situation yeah. where it's like, I was just trying to save my wife. Yeah. Like, it comes from a good place. But I do agree, Kyle. Yeah, it wasn't done, like, well. Yeah, the only one I cared about when he died was um, Michael Rappaport. Mm-hmm. That was like a that was somebody that was just like yeah, he's, like, he's so he's so nice. I feel like he knew he yeah. was gonna I like die him in too. every. Yeah. I feel like I like him in every movie he's in. Everybody likes Michael. Yeah, it's, he's kind of hard to hate. <laughs> but, all right, let's go. First time view, Chris. First time viewer over here, Deep Blue Sea, Rennie Harlan. Fucking honestly, um, yeah. There's a lot of cheesiness like peppered in here. The CG doesn't hold up very well. Um, but I had a fucking great time watching this movie. Like, and I did not go into it positively. I, I before I put it on, I I said out loud, like, this is gonna be a stupid fucking cheesy movie. I'm not yeah. looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. By the end of it, I was like, I had a lot of fun. It definitely was intense in certain parts. Like, I don't care that stuff's cheesy. You know, like when when you go to these extremes where it's like a crazy action film and every terrible scenario that could possibly happen is unfolding throughout the whole movie. Like in a in a in the pace that it's in, I'm like fuck, man. This is like a ride, you know. I feel like he was making like a ride kind of movie, and uh, again, that's kind of what the blockbuster I feel like is. Um, he succeeded, uh, in my opinion, and yeah, like it, you could say negative things about it, but overall, it's pretty fun. I'm gonna give this a three point five. Um, Thought he was going five on that one. Thought he was going five. Yeah, I like the gore. I like the, you know, I I think it was a well put together film for, you know, a late 90s like action big budget creature feature thing they were trying to do. And 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 putting it next to Jaws, I don't know where it ranks necessarily, but it's definitely top 5 easily. Shark movie? Yeah. I give I put it in top 5. Yeah. I'd put it in top 5. So 3.5. All right, then Mike wanted us to ask this question, so let's let's ask it right now. Is it a cold film? I say yes. Ooh, what's a yes from Kyle? I say yes, and, and, and even if even if it hasn't been recognized as such, I feel like I it's think time it, to I recognize think it, it might, as such. I think it might be in like a small sect of people, but it's yeah. got every. I feel like it's got all the pieces that you want, especially now because of the age and the how to compare it to, you know, films of nowadays. So yeah. like special effects looking bad, you know, like L. Cool J's character, like the ridiculous plot, like all these things, and like. It, it, I mean, if if everybody's considering Sharknado, one, it has to be this film. Yeah, like there was so much where I felt like, the, like the creators I, of Sharknado had to have. Like, I have a problem with film. that because I feel like Sharknado is one of those one of those situations where it's like they got lucky. the new cult film. Like no, I agree. they they made a purpose driven cult they, film. Yeah, and, and they got lucky I, with I, it though. You, you, I don't like that either. I hate it when people come out and they say we're making a cult film. It's like you don't know, you can't make a cult they film. They did though. The audience guides that. I'm just saying, in their case, it did actually yeah. work. Yeah, they got like, yeah. the rare exception to that. What about you, Chris? Do you think it's a cold film? Honestly, no, I don't. Um, wow. I, I, I wow. feel like the dissenter. Wow. I, I, I feel like some of the things that are called out as being cult filmish in this, it just isn't like it didn't like put the nail in the coffin for me on it's a cult film. Like Samuel Jackson's death, for example, like. I don't know what's culty about that other than it's like, oh, yeah, he gets snatched out of the water by a shark. We see that multiple times throughout the movie. And also it's like, yeah, it's Samuel Jackson. You don't expect him to die early on. But like we see multiple deaths like almost done like in the same fashion throughout the whole rest it's of the It's also film. that outrageous fucking speech about yeah. the, yeah. Chris. The whole Come thing. on. And plus, plus like look at a, look at a lot of other outrageous. Look at a lot was... of other films like a simple one simple scene can be powerful enough to make something. A cult film. I mean, the yeah. first one that pops in my head is like Teen Witch and the rap 
scene. Uh-huh. Yeah. The yeah. top that. It's just this That's one true. simple, right. ridiculous right. scene. Something that everybody can identify with because they of remember terror. this. The only thing I remember yeah. for Tales of Terror was the doll scene. I mean, as no. far as like Trilogy the terror. like saying there's like Trilogy, horny, right, like sorry. horny one liners, I just think the dialogue was just bad. I don't think it was like funny. Like like I don't know. He just said he had a fun time watching. I had a fun time watching, and I'm just saying I'm trying to figure out what the elements are truly that will be that will make this go down in history. I think you're naming it. I I I do think you're naming it. Like at this point, it hasn't aged well, so it's now it's it's, not bad enough, in my opinion. That's I and it's I'm a first time watcher. I just don't think. Yeah, but a cult film doesn't need to be bad. I think it's just goofy enough. I, I think mean, it's the just, way it's de- kind it's of just been go- described. It's like, just I feel like it's we're just almost goofy enough. so bad it's no, good yeah, or that's so I outlandish. Feel, it's on like its way there. We're making the mistake of arguing if it's a cult film or if it's a so bad it's good. It sounds like you, it sounds like you're Where's arguing the, it's uh, not a so cult, bad it's good. But I, I would say if you're into like shark exploitation, maybe this makes it into your collection of movies that you own. I don't think there's a rabbit fan base for. I this don't movie. know, man. I think the very fact that you use the word exploitation in anything kind of like initially gives. Saying it's in a genre thing, that exists. Here's the it's thing. Not... I think somebody. I think. I think somebody said it the right way earlier. And there, I kind of agree with Chris in that. I don't think it's quite yet a cult film. But so I think one of you two either. Kyle I said. Or... I think if it's not yet, I think it deserves it. It's on point. its way. I think it's on its way. I think, I think the it's cheesy a... rap at the end, like people are latching onto that or whatever. But that it's like, like oh well, deep is blue is yeah. like, my I, 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 I do see what you're saying. Like it does have these little elements peppered in there. But like watching it for the first time didn't feel like. Oh, this is definitely like a quintessential cult. I don't film. think. Yeah, like, I don't think it's there. No, I agree with you. I don't think it's there yet. I think that it will. Give it another. Give it another ten years. I think yeah, it will. Be. I will, and I'd be interested to see it. You might be right. I, I mean, think it will, it, especially for that 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 genre of shark exploitation. Because come on, if there is going to be a, a subgenre cult film, shark shark will go shark exploitation. Like yeah. that tells me that there's shark films. Yeah, and then there's shark exploitation films. There's right. a difference. So yeah. it's a sub. It's a subgenre of an already subgenre. Exactly. It's anything that's been like done to death, really. You know, so, <laughs> you know. I think given another ten years, it will be. Even though twenty years is probably enough. Yeah, I, I'll be interested to find out. People walking around wearing deep blue sea shirts and quoting Samuel Jackson's speech. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't see it. <laughs> Number one, if they made a deep blue sea shirt, I would wear that. The, the, the hot new hot topic and shirt. Just, just to let you know, just <laughs> like, deep blue sea. All the kids are into it now. Just to let you know, Chris, a sequel for this film, directed video, did just come out in did, yeah. 2000, just recently? 2018. What yeah. the fuck? I the saw sequel that came when out we were looking at this, yeah. almost fucking well, 20 what years later. For? <laughs> almost waiting 20 for years for that. Later. That the fan base, audience the fan base. Hit. You're right. You it know, I do believe there are a collection of people out there that really enjoy this movie. I am, I do enjoy this movie as well. Just not like I don't put it on that level. I don't know why. Okay. I I like Rennie Harlan as a director, though. You know, it's like I think he could be a cult director to some degree. Oh, I don't know. I don't, that's ooh, Chris. I don't know. I don't know. I, I feel like some of his films, yes, and then some others, no. It's a, it, it, but it's such a hard hit, like. Because it's again, like he's done like historic weird things, like the whole Exorcist thing is like a historic thing. Whenever has a, a yeah. movie, the same movie b- by different directors been, been released at yeah. the same fucking time. That was an accident too. I'm wearing an Exorcist shirt. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Funny. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. it's no, so you're fucking right. weird. You're right. I think I think yeah. People, you're already like saying I'm a Rennie Harlan fan. Like I feel like there's people out there that feel really passionate about his stuff. Like so, some of his stuff, not everything he's made, but he's just a he's just a, it's a it's a it's like he's achieved this weird level of awesome mediocrity. I don't know how else like two words that that can explain it. Like where I like Rennie. Here's what I like about Rennie Harlan. I like his films because they are big and extreme, but they're not as like. Pre- Pretentious sometimes is like yes. Michael Bay's film. I was just yes. I was gonna say the same thing. Like yeah. Michael Bay's, it's like you kind of say, yeah, but, but you kind of think you're the shit. Like I feel like Rennie Harlan is kind of like a little bit more like he's like I'm trying. Guys, yeah, we don't have to overthink this. All right, like we get her to take her fucking wetsuit off right now. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, I think is a horrible scene. <laughs> so terrible scene. But no, I I feel like with Rennie Harlan, there's not like like Michael Bay films have those. Big, like sweeping, like dramatic slow mo yeah. shots and shit. You know, Rennie Harlan is kind of like let the explosion speak for themselves. Yep. Like they yeah. know what they know what they're doing. Yeah, I agree. All right, guys, that's our show for this week. Do us a favor, head over to coldfilmandreview dot com. Put in your request for a film for us to review. Who knows? One of us may choose it, like I did, because I had nothing to pick from. Uh, that can happen at any time, Chris. Any time that could happen, Chris. Um, Kyle doesn't make any sense. Kyle, 
Maybe you, who knows? Maybe Kyle's next pick will be a fan pick. Kyle we don't know. Again. <laughs> we got Kyle, Kyle again. Kyle. Kyle. We got Kyle again. And then when you're done with that, head over to our YouTube page, like and subscribe there. Um, May 10th, we will be at Film Bar for Buffalo 66. Make sure you tune out for tune out. Tune Make out. sure you turn out. Don't tune out. Wow. Make sure you turn out for that one. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you know Cody will be. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you follow us on social media at Colt Film in Review on Instagram at Colt Film underscore Review on Twitter. Find us on Facebook. We're also on there. You can follow uh, Kyle. At- you can follow me on Instagram at Colt Film underscore Kyle. You can follow Chris at Colt Film underscore Chris on Instagram. You can follow Mike at at Mike Salucio on Twitter. And you can follow me at VHS Collect on Instagram and Snapchat. That's our show for this week. Remember, if you're going to join a cult, just make sure they watch good movies. We'll see you next time.